Greetings, President McInnes, Assembly Speaker Hasty, Chancellor Malatris, Stony Brook faculty and staff, students, alumni, and guests. My name is Manjot Singh, and I'm the president of the undergraduate student government. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this historic occasion. A special welcome and congratulations to Dr. Maury McInnes as we celebrate your inauguration as Stony Brook University's sixth president throughout today's long-awaited homecoming. It is a pleasure to be able to work with you um, as we have worked together in the previous year and the upcoming years to come. Today we celebrate the Unity Cultural Center in its new location here at the Student Union. This beautiful campus community center would not be possible without the support of our elect elected officials. I know that they will get many praises today, but on behalf of the Stony Brook University student body, including the undergraduate and graduate students, I want to thank our elected officials that made this center possible. The name of the center is spelled U-N-I-T-I, -I, which is the acronym for United Nationalities in Transcending Ideologies. It is a name that Stony Brook Black and Latino student community gave the original cultural center when it was established in 1982. It is the spirit of this name and unity that is spelled with the Y that we acknowledge the cultural center's history and recognize two student representatives of its legacy. Violet Walker, who is the president of the Black Student Union, and Destiny Corona, freshman representative of the Latin American Student Organization. And let's acknowledge them and their organization with an applause. It is the great efforts of their predecessors, student leaders that came before them, that really opened the Culture Uni Center to begin with in the 1980s. Today's student body consists of over 300 student clubs and organizations, of which nearly 100 are cultural and ethnic interest student groups that will experience this beautiful culture, cultural center that our entire campus community will enjoy. I would like to acknowledge the student leaders of all of Stony Brook's clubs and organizations present today. Please raise your hands to be collectively recognized. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce President McInnes. Thank you, Manjot, and I am much shorter. <laughs> it is a privilege and a pleasure to be here today celebrating the new Stony Brook University Unity Cultural Center, an institution that speaks to the heart of our university's mission and epitomizes the dynamic, diverse, and strong sense of community on this campus. Established in 1978, the Unity Center was built to cultivate a culture of respect, growth, learning, celebration, and diversity here at Stony Brook, a goal well reflected in its full name united nationalities in transcending ideologies. Early articles in Stony Brook's Black World publication note that the center was needed to, quote, develop and accentuate the ethnic cultures on campus, and as a venue for critical discussion of contemporary issues facing students, faculty, and staff of color, end quote. The founders wanted an identified place on campus that would tend to educational, spiritual, and cultural growth. Since the Unity Center's inception over 40 years ago, the importance of this mission has become more apparent than ever. The last year and a half alone have revealed the country's critical need for equitable and inclusive education, systematic change for racial equality, and multicultural collaboration as we build a brighter future. I could not feel more confident in Stony Brook's ability to lead the way in this effort. We have always been a university that recognizes the importance of an inclusive multicultural education and community. A university that knows the value and unparalleled potential for discovery 
that comes with a diverse population of faculty, students, and staff. Now more than ever, I want us to rely on and uphold this integral part of our mission. How fitting then that this year marks the opening of the new Unity Center. It has taken way too long to find a permanent home, but I am thrilled that we are finally cutting the ribbon on that forever home today and that we are doing it with one of the people who fought for its existence while a student activist in the late 1980s, Speaker Carl Hasty. <laughs> this new home was made possible because of a $3 million New York State Assembly grant initiated by SBU alumnus and speaker of the New York State Assembly, Carl Hasty, along with his colleagues and fellow alumni assemblymen, Sting, Steve Inglebright, Assemblywoman Kimberly Jean-Pierre, and Assemblywoman Latoya Joyner. And jumping in to add her support is the newest addition to what I call the New York State Assembly Seawolf team, Assemblywoman Sarah Clark. <laughs> who traveled all the way from Rochester to join us in this event and today's festivities. The Assembly Seawolf team members have long been our champions. And in this year's state budget, also secured $200,000 to help renovate the Mental Health Counseling Center at Student Health Services. This funding will help us deliver support and resources to our students who have undergone a period of serious challenges and change over the last year and a half. Thank you for that as well. Speaker Hasty, in the past you have spoken about the profound impact of your education at Stony Brook and also the role that the Unity Center played in your time here as a place of community and connection. The new Unity Center ensures that Stony Brook will continue to be a place for multicultural celebration, collaboration, connection, and community building. Thank you, Speaker Hasty. Thank you, Assembly Members Inglebright, Jean Pierre, Joyner, and Clark, for being true friends to Sea Wolves, past, present, and future. Your achievements and leadership set an inspiring example for all of our students. As hoped for by students throughout the past 40 years, this new Unity Center will shape student lives for generations to come and will provide a second home where individuals across campus are encouraged to forge bonds and partnerships that will last a lifetime. We are deeply grateful. At this time, please join me in applauding these outstanding legislators as I welcome Speaker Hasty to provide remarks. Wow. So um, I have so many wonderful Stony Brook stories that I like to tell. Um, there's some of the guys and, and Christina. Oh, we got a whole bunch of surprises over there. The, the group over there waving, I actually attended Stony Brook. And they were part of the members of the Unity Cultural uh, Center um, for us. So, But whenever I come back here to the campus, I get very nostalgic. As I mentioned at uh, uh, President McGinnis' uh, um, inauguration, every time I ride on the campus, I say, that building wasn't here, that wasn't there. Oh, this is new, this is new. Um, but for us to be here today, um, and remember, and I, and I say this in the, the two presidents of the Union Cultural Center when I was here, 
And President McGinnis, when you said 1988, boy, you just aged me with the... <laughs> um, but, you know, to Wayne Blair and to, and to Sean Joe, uh, who, who I know are here in spirit, and, you know, we started out, we were in a, a corner room in the Roth cafeteria, which was only used for the cultural center and the occasional party when we, uh, we wanted to have a, uh, a good time. But when I say I get nostalgic when I come back here to Stony Brook, when uh, um, my colleagues, uh, well, Kimberly and Sarah, you weren't there yet, but when Steve, uh, they gave me the privilege of electing me the first African-American speaker in the history of New York State, uh, New York One had did a profile on me, one of the good things that people say about me. Um, and it mentioned that in 1990, when I was already graduating on my way out, that I wrote a letter with some other students asking the person who has my job now, well, had my job then, uh, Speaker Stanley Fink, to give public universities more money. Now, how amazing is that to come full circle where I'm now the person who's the recipient of the letters asking for more, for more money? But you don't have to ask me uh, for more money. I don't think there's, uh, the, the New York State Assembly, I don't think there's bigger, any bigger supporters in uh, public uh, education. I got my uh, undergraduate degree here from SUNY Stony Brook or Stony Brook University, and I got my MBA in finance from Baruch. So I am a huge supporter of, of public education and, and what it uh, did for me and what it could do for all of you. And when I came in here today, um, because when we were students here, the union was the center of the universe. Now y'all got a bunch of centers of universes. It's like, uh, you actually, we almost, uh, and my best friend's uh, wife, and I call her my friend-in-law, my, my friend-in-law, we were walking here. It's like we had to lo look for like landmark buildings that we remembered so we could remember where we, where we are. But to be told that this is going to be like a, a real student-oriented center, because for us, and I remember, we, I'm going back 30-something years ago, the Unity Cultural Center was where we strategized, where we bonded, where we laughed, where we cried, where we planned, where we just felt like when we had to get things off our, we were each other's mental health counselors at, you know, at, at that point. We, we confided in each other. Uh, we, like I said, we supported uh, you know, each other. So I'm just so thrilled that uh, the New York State Assembly was able to make this contribution uh, to what we have here. So I just want to say to all of the, the students here, just use it, remember it, cherish, cherish it. And as you get into your next phase of your life, just the same way that those of us that were here 30 years ago wanted to always make sure that there was some place, a refuge for students to come together. Just do that same thing when you get to where you want to go in life. Good luck. Congratulations. God bless everybody. I'm so happy this is a beautiful day today. Well, I don't know what I did wrong by going after a speaker, Tasty, because I'm not bringing any money. I'm going to ask the speaker for money, just so we know how that's all going to go. So we're going to write him a letter. I hope you all will join me. Asking for lots more money. <laughs> Funny little story because, Speaker, we came here when they reopened this beautiful center, which is so student centric, is what we're all about. Man God Singh, the really great student leader that they had, was um, complaining a little bit about his unpaid parking tickets. <laughs> but he luckily he told us today he's all up to date on parking tickets, so let's give him a big round of applause for that. <laughs> Um, just a couple points, because the speaker and the President McGinnis on this great day said it all. Investing in place is really critical. And it's important for us, especially in public higher education, because often those elite colleges get a lot of resources and they get a lot of nice buildings. But it demonstrates to our students that we value them and we want them to have modern spaces too. And spaces like the Unity Center, spaces to learn, to debate, to explore how to become a more just society. In a time where we can't even engage in a debate in a meaningful way without being argumentative and polarized, that's what the Unity Center will do. It will allow us to weave a tapestry of different cultures 
and ideologies together for better understanding. And we're really, really thankful for that opportunity. And that, because, that is because we do have champions in the New York State Assembly. Speaker Hasty and his colleagues have stepped up for us in a big way. Public higher education matters to them. They put their money where their mouth was, and they made one of the largest investments in higher education last year, and if you, we're gonna keep paying dividends on that. We're gonna show them that we could do things like that. So if you invest in SUNY, the largest comprehensive system of higher education, we can do extraordinary things. So let's give the assembly members a big round of applause. We will have the letter signed by all the students to the speaker at the end of today. So thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Gerald Dorsonville. I am here representing today the Black and Latino Alumni Network. Uh, the Black and Latino Alumni Network is an affinity group of the Greater Alumni Association. We were founded to foster the relationship between the university and its Black and Latino alumni, as well as build uh, our community, the Black and Latino community. As we leave Stony Brook, it's important that we stay connected, that we work together, because when we do that, as you can see from the examples that have been presented here already, we can achieve things like this. Um, the Unity Cultural Center, I remember when I was here on campus, it was a place for us to, we had general body meetings, uh, e-board meetings, um, countless uh, programs, um, and don't, don't have an event where we were serving food. We'd be trying to uh, feed 500 students with two pieces of oxtail and five bowls of rice and peas. And <laughs> tr truly a miracle, because we, we accomplished it. Um, and so th that's the kind of place that it, that it was for us. But uh, the UCC, as we referred to it back then, it transcended its physicality. It was a place where uh, students found an opportunity to celebrate our uh, cultures. It, we found uh, ways to uh, foster relationships, meaningful relationships with the things that um, we had in common. And it was a place for ideas. It was a place where we could foster these ideas, develop these ideas, and propagate them. And so it, it was founded by students, though, right? And so I really want the students who are here today to understand that this is a place that students built, right? It wasn't built by administration, right? It was a place that students built. It was for students, by students. And as you can see, it is Stony Brook students who are now alumni who helped build this center that we're standing at and celebrating today. And so the the, the space, it's, in many respects, it's achieving exactly what it was meant to so many years later. Um, Stony Brook University is uh, widely regarded now as a institution that provides upward mobility for black and Latino peoples. Um, I benefited from that, and it is uh, my obligation. It's one, of, it's one of the goals that I won't postpone. Right, that, that we continue to provide those opportunities for future generations. And so, um, as you can see, the, the alumni who have graduated here, right, the, the people who are out there developing themselves, building their communities, they come back and they give. And because they give, they ensure that these spaces can continue to exist um, for us. I look out into the crowd and I see a number of people who I admire and that I appreciate and they work diligently and are exemplary of this idea. And so I just like to single out um, the uh, assembly members, uh, Speaker Hasty, um, assembly member um, Jean-Pierre Latoya Joyner, um, assembly member Engelbright and the newbie. <laughs> see, I, you as a, I wasn't aware of until today, but I'm, I'm sorry you are assembly member Clark. All right, it's a pleasure to meet you. And so I just want to take the opportunity to recognize these individuals because, again, without them, we may not be celebrating this, um, this facility today. And so we, it is important that we recognize them, we acknowledge them for their work, and we use them as examples to show our alumni community what we can accomplish when we come back to campus and, and we give. Um, with that said, we, we have a, 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 the day is, uh, is, is bright. Um, we, we have a, a game that we need to win today, right? Go Sea Wolves, <laughs> right? We, we have a little, uh, we have a little shindig after, after, the, uh, after the game over at the, uh, at the Hilton. Um, it's being sponsored by the BLA, so hopefully some of you guys will, will pass through. We'll have the opportunity to connect, um, build relationships with one another, and again, Go Sea Wolves. Thank you so much.
What a, what a pleasure to have a chance to say just a couple of words. Mr. Speaker, you appointed me as the chair of the Committee on, on Environmental Conservation. Thank you for believing in recycling. We've recycled this building. <laughs> I remember the old building. It had a bridge that went nowhere. The students got fed up with that. They were wearing t-shirts that said Stony Brook, the bridge to nowhere. That was not good. It was in this building that Professor Hugh Cleveland, the, the late history professor, invited me over. He said, Steve, I want to talk to you about something. We went upstairs. We sat down. He said, I want you to run for office. It started here. Uh, that was almost 40 years ago. Um, many great things have happened here. Many more will happen here. I am so thrilled that our new president and the speaker uh, have both spoken of student mental health uh, today. Uh, the Counseling and Psychological Services grant that Mr. Speaker and my colleagues have made possible. Thank you so much. Uh, more than, and, and Chancellor, as you pointed out, more than any other time as we went through this COVID year. That's so very important. And it's very heartening uh, that you each, uh, our leaders, have recognized that importance today as well. Thank you for all you've done. It's an honor to be here. Go see Wolves. Thank you. Um, I'm Assemblywoman Kimberly Jean-Pierre, and I bring greetings from our colleague Latoya Joyner, who could not be here with us. Um, and congratulations, Madam President McManus, on your inauguration. Look forward to working with you in the near future. Um, but I want to thank our speaker and our, my colleagues for investing, bringing back and coming back to what gave us the foundation to allow us to serve greater, the greater New York. So thank you, and thank you for my colleagues. This is the place of home. I always say my brother is the Stony Brook mascot of the family. Uh, he graduated, he did his undergraduate here, did two masters here, got engaged on campus, got married at the Wang Center, recruited me, and recruited my younger brother. So, but he went, he went and got his PhD at Rutgers University. And Stony Brook is the foundation. I'm born and raised in Brooklyn, and this is what kept me on Long Island. Stony Brook University is the reason why I'm still here. So, and so as the students remember what the institution that built you and gave you, and when you succeed and where you get, remember, come back home and continue to support those behind you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Assemblywoman Sarah Clark and a, a newbie to the, what was it called? The Seawolves? Seawolves Caucus Team, whatever, in the Assembly. We'll call it, something will stick at some point and it'll go on. Um, I've been in office now just short of a year. Um, I was sworn in November of last year and so excited. I have not been back on campus, so a little story for the mental health piece. I was here 92 to 96, I was a swimmer but I, like many, ran into some, some other issues in my life and didn't actually graduate to 99. So um, I was four classes short, which many students may know what that feels like when you're just not quite there. But I was able to finish and graduate, so I'm ex so excited to be part of the esteemed alumni assembly class. Um, the one thing I will quickly mention is what we know, I mean, I'm from Rochester, it's six hours, six and a half hours away, depending on traffic. Um, you know, I did not get to go home on the weekends as many of my classmates did, or even at night for those that commuted. Um, the space outside of classrooms is often where the magic happens when you're in college. So to be here in a moment when we're opening what is a beautiful center, I can't wait to hear from how it's going to be used beyond just a place to connect and hang and brainstorm and come up with ideas. Um, it, it, 
it is what defines us, those times that we're able to connect with our fellow classmates, our, our faculty, our professors, and the staff here to decide what next or what we need to fight for or whatever it may be. So I'm just pleased to be a part of it. Thanks for letting me crash as a newbie. And President McInnes, I congratulations. What a wonderful weekend. Go see Wolves. Good afternoon. Wow, as <laughs> I look around here. Um, firstly, I want to um, you join. <laughs> Thank you. Well, this is not about me, it's really about the UCC. Um, first, I want to congratulate you, President McInnes on your inauguration. What a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor Malatris. Thank you, Speaker Hasty. Elected officials, senior administrators, faculty, staff, alumni, and all the students who are here today for sharing in this special occasion. I'm certain that we're all familiar with the phrase standing on the shoulders of giants, which is credited to Sir Isaac Newton, for using it to describe the understanding that is gained from those who have gone before us. As we use that understanding to make progress. So today's event would not be complete without me mentioning some of the giants, just a few of them, who have shaped and developed this Unity Cultural Center for more than 40 years, over the past 40 years or so. I'm just gonna highlight a few of them. The late Emile Adams. The late William McAdoo. Frederick Preston. Lucia Rusty. Linda Martin. Gerald Shepard, Judy Burhannon, Deborah Britton Riley, Linda Perdomo Ayala, Roman de la Campa, Al Jordan, and so, so many others across this, this wide campus, this wide university, who poured their hearts, their time, their resources into this place called the Unity Culture Center or the UCC for Stony Brook's students. Many of you, these are just names to you, but for others, there's so, so much more. I'll just share with you when and where I entered into this history. It was about 1990, and I came from upstate, another institution, and I was in this place and Emile said to me, Cheryl, what do you think about Stony Brook? And I said, well, there's a lot that is here. There's a jewel that is here, given the diversity, given the opportunity, given even the passion of the students that are here. And so here we are 40 years later paying homage to the past, but charting a bright and new and broader and more inclusive future. It's been my pleasure to serve in this capacity of supporting the UCC. And it wouldn't be possible without the support of our senior administrators, our campus president, clearly the elected officials who have collaborated and to work so hard to make this possible. No, you don't wave a magic wand and the funds come <laughs> flowing. There's a lot of work behind the scenes, conversation, considerations. But yet here we are in this wonderful space for today's students, for the old, nearly 100 cultural clubs and organizations, and even groups beyond that, for all in community here to enjoy. And all that I can say is thank you. Thank you all. So 
let's get on with it. Here's the moment that you've all been waiting for, right? The ribbon cutting. So we want you not to just see what's inside of this space, but also to experience it while you're here. So we're gonna have student guides inside at various stations throughout the center that are gonna tell you about each of the areas and the design concepts and um, how they will function. Since we are such a large group, we're just gonna ask for your patience as we go through and tour the space. Alternatively, you might wanna to tour this beautiful building the new Stony Brook Union, if you haven't seen all of its features, and then circle back here. So we offer that to you, you know, as well. Okay. When you go inside, I encourage you to take a look. Take a moment to take a look at the plaque that was installed on the wall behind the reception desk. It describes not only the meaning of the center, but it acknowledges these wonderful elected officials who've made this all possible. And I invite you to please join us again in the spring semester in February for the grand opening of the center. What a celebration that's going to be.